the ascending clock auction takes often multiple rounds. What if I'm not able to be there um, for the full duration of the auction? That's a very good question. So just like on eBay, you're allowed to submit a proxy bid. So let's say I am that bidder that is willing to bid 195. Um, I had to experience many, many rounds of bidding uh, as it gradually went up in price and bidders gradually dropped out. In an ascending clock auction, we, all, we always allow proxy bids. And the proxy bid is the bidder who is too busy or is away on travels or what have you, they can put their bid in in advance. They can simply say, the most I'm willing to bid is 195. So they put that bid in advance. And what's going to happen is the auction system effectively bids for them in each round and says, I'm in at 110, I'm in at 120, I'm in at 130, all the way until the price goes up to 200, and then the auction system says, okay, now we put in your bid of 195, your exit bid. And so, in fact, a bidder that has to bid, um, uh, they, they can't watch the auction. Um, they can bid at any point. Now, if I put in the 195 proxy bid, and then I realize, oh, I want to change my bid. In fact, I'm, I'm willing to go up to 210. Then, in fact, as long as they get to the auction system before 195 has been reached, you know, let's say we're at 180, then they can go into the auction system and change their 195 to 210, no problem. But of course, once their exit bid has been accepted by the auction system, that is, the auction system says, okay, the price now is 200, then at that point, their exit bid will be placed and the exit is irrevocable. So what about in our auction, there will be multiple domains. How does that work? Oh, correct, yes. So there's, there are many domains, and so in fact there's many items. It's not just one pair of sunglasses that's being auctioned. So in fact, in that case, Let's say we've got, for example, two items, and then once you understand two items, uh, any number of items, whether it be 10 or 100, is effectively the same. So now, what we're going to do is effectively the same thing. Uh, we're going to auction off the two items using the ascending clock for format that I just described. Now the issue is, uh, there, there are basically two ways to do this. One would be to do what Christie's and Sotheby's does, which is auction them in sequence. So first they would have an English auction for the sunglasses, and then they would auction off the uh, phone. So this is a nice 4G LTE phone, and uh, the uh, two would be done in sequence. But what we do instead, what's being proposed, is for the applicant auction is simultaneous ascending clock. So what that means is that both are going to be on the trading block at the same time. So there'll be a price for the sunglasses, there'll be a price for the 4G phone, and what you'll do as a bidder is you'll look at the current prices. You know, let's say the, uh, well, let's start out, uh, the, the Sunglasses, they started at $100. The phone, it started, this is a very nice phone, it starts at $200. And then what happens is we ask, so who wants, and there's, let's say that there's the four competing for the sunglasses, but there's just two applicants competing for the phone. Let's say both are in at $100. I'm sorry, all four are in at $100 for the sunglasses. Both are in at $200 for the phone. And so I've got excess demand for both. The price will go up for both. For example, 10%. So now the next price is $110 for the sunglasses, $220 for the phone. Again, we ask, who's in, who's out? Price goes up. So the sunglasses, 
we already know it's going to go up to 195 um, when the last party is going to drop out. Um, so, but as this is going up, let's say we get to a price of uh, $300 for the phone, and at that point, that's too much for one of the bidders. So we go from 280 to 300 and one of the two bidders says, no, I can't do it. Uh, I can go up to uh, 290 but I cannot do 300 Then, <clears throat> what happens is they, we found a winner. The highest bidder is the one that's still continuing at 300 or alternatively set an exit bid that's above 290 290 is the second highest price 290 sets the price the clearing price for the phone the phone sells for $290 and in this case it's really simple the $290 this this is still let's say at uh, 160 at this point so we've got this at 160 there's a demand for two this now is cleared. What happens? We actually know who won, and we know who is, that's the buyer. We know who the seller is. The seller is the one that bid uh, 290. And so uh, they will exit it at 290. The uh, other party that applied, the other applicant, then we'll get the 290, and in fact that 290 will be credited to uh, the, since it's certain now who's the uh, buyer and who's the seller, the 290 will be credited into the seller's account and that will give them uh, a, a larger deposit, uh, enabling them um, greater flexibility in uh, subsequent bidding. This, the sunglasses, they're still continuing at 160 and ultimately this gets pushed up all the way to 195. And then that's done and the 195 is um, dispersed among the three sellers of the sunglasses.